Hey everyone, my name is Tiffany. Um, I am a third year currently at ICO, and I'm sure you've seen me on the ICO's uh, student videos um, and vlogging around, so I'm gonna pass it over to Kenny now. Hey everyone, it's Kenny. I am also a third year here at ICO, and we're doing a little Q&A with Tisha Johnson. She's the Senior Director of Admissions uh, to hopefully answer some questions that you may have regarding you know, getting into optometry school, applying to optometry school, maybe what you should be focused on earlier before you apply, and hopefully give you a little insight on the best way to go about the whole process. So the first thing that we wanted to talk about with Tisha um, is specifically kind of what you should be focused on during your undergraduate years. So maybe if there's a specific degree that you should be chasing or a specific major or any recommended courses you might have for a student to take. Sure, and thank you guys for having me. My recommendation for undergraduates, in terms of degree, you do not need a specific degree. When you look at our class profile that's on our website, you will notice that we have students who've had various majors. Many are gonna be biology, but you will find that we have dance majors, mathematics majors. That's in, uh, not as important as really the course loads that you're taking and how are you gonna do academically. So major doesn't matter. Um, degree doesn't matter. We do have though prerequisite courses that students do need to take, so that's going to be very important. So they should look at our website to look at the list of prerequisite courses we have that are required for uh, entry into the program. When should you take the OET? How should one prepare for the OET? Um, and what's the distribution range of OET scores for ICO students specifically? When it comes to the OAT, we typically recommend that applicants take the OAT the same summer that they're going to apply to optometry school. So for instance, our upcoming application cycle will launch in June, and that's typically a good time to take the OAT. Usually students are out of school, um, they have more time to study and really more time to prepare. On average, students tell us they take about two months to study, but that will really be dependent uh, you know, uh, per applicant. And there are a lot of resources, so I encourage students to do your research beforehand. There are classes, there are videos, there are flashcards. You guys probably went through this process, so you probably remember the resources that you use. Um, there's a lot of material out there, so really narrow down to the material that's going to be helpful for you um, as an applicant and preparing. And you also want to make sure, even if you don't take it that summer, ideally you want to make sure you take it at least um, 90 days before our deadline and why in case you need to retake the exam you have to wait 90 days to retake it so it's going to be important to look at the timelines uh, deadlines and really plan out being strategic on when you're going to take the OAT um, in terms of the GPA uh, the OAT distribution I would say typically we are going to find students who may come in with the total science of as low as 260 and as high as 400. Um, we review each application um, and we'll look at the overall application and the OAT is just one of many things that we will look at. So you will find on our class profile information related to our average GPA, average OAT, and even our GRE, which is the other standardized test that we do accept at ICO. Cool. So Tisha, you mentioned um, just briefly kind of uh, a rough idea of how to prepare for the OAT. Um, but let's say somebody needed to retake it, they weren't happy with their score, or perhaps they didn't feel it was competitive enough. Uh, is there any shame in retaking the OAT or, or anything they should be aware of if they decide to do that? You know, that's a great question. There is no shame in repeating the OAT. There, I can't, you know, give you an exact number of how many applicants we have who do repeat, but there are candidates who may uh, went into the exam and just took it to see what was on there, which is a bad strategy, don't do that. <laughs> Prepare for it is, is my recommendation. Or they went in and maybe they weren't feeling well. You know, something happened and they just didn't get those results that they wanted. I tell students, if you're gonna have to repeat the exam, just don't sign up automatically and say, all right, in 90 days I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna study longer and harder. Really think back on how you prepared. Um, did you, you know, spend as much time on all the sections? Did you skip, say, biology because you're a biology major and thought, I don't need to study that. I'm in biology now, and that has happened with some applicants. So if you're going to retake the exam, the best thing to do is go back, see what worked for you, what didn't work for you, and modify your methods. 
Um, the last piece of advice is not to try to memorize. I don't think that works for an exam like the OAT. Um, you really have to understand the concepts and learn how to apply them in different settings. And so that would, is my typical recommendation for anybody who's retaking the OAT. All right. So I think uh, obviously the OIT is a huge component of the application that we submit. Uh, is there anything else that you would say really focus on in that time while you're in college to really strengthen your application or just other things that ICO is looking for? Uh, sure. So from the applicant side of things, if an applicant can, and I know not everybody can do this, but be, in, be involved on campus. So if you can be part of whether it's the pre-optometry, pre-health club, uh, different student organizations, maybe a, fr a fraternity, a sorority, enjoy your college experience because we look for well-rounded candidates. You know, we just don't want somebody who goes to class and study and, you know, not engaging with their peers. Um, at ICO, our students are very engaged, and so if you've seen any of our blogs or our videos, you've seen that engagement that they have outside of the classroom and clinic. So I think that's very important for students. Having a good foundation of the knowledge of optometry, um, the knowledge of the profession of optometry, that's going to be very important. You have to have an idea of what you're getting into um, as you're preparing to enter this uh, wonderful career. So make sure you're doing your shadowing. We don't have a minimum number of hours, but it's important that you've done your research and you know optometry is for you and why it's for you, not just that, all right, this is a great profession. I can see myself doing it. So engage with ODs. Many applicants will um, get a chance to work in the profession, and I think that's great, but it doesn't um, impact your application if you can't, because it's hard to find jobs, especially now during the pandemic. So get as much shadowing as you can, and if you can observe in different modalities and specialties, that would be great, because you're going to constantly learn more and more about the profession when you're able to do that. Um, and lastly, letters of recommendation are part of the application cycle, and so I encourage applicants to not just find that professor that they earned an A in a course, um, because that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be the best letter. So you're really trying to look for people who you've been able to engage with throughout your time. We accept the science professor, our preference is a science professor or your pre-health advisor, but we will take um, any professor who has taught you, and hopefully you can find someone who can write you an, a nice solid letter of recommendation and talk about you not just as an, um, a student but then also the personal side of you. Thank you. And like just talking about the different modalities it's really cool that you mentioned that because before I applied to ICO I took a route going to more practicing in a corporate area or like helping tech in a corporate setting and also teching in a private practice and I realized like oh I kind of like this part or I could see the pros and cons of each one so it was like really cool to see that before you know investing all my time into optometry school so that was one cool thing to see um, but you know after one person has collected their OET score their letters of rec they've you know met all their course requirements when should they start applying for you know ICO or just optometry school in general and is there a benefit to applying early like do you get like a little sneak in kind of thing or you know what happens next sure. all right so in terms of applying so you're going to utilize optomcast which is the application uh service for all schools and colleges of optometry so it's great that you have one place to go when i started um ICO 16 years ago, students were actually applying to each school separately. So can you imagine trying to send out oh applications and following that? So now with the CAS, as I call it, it makes it so much easier for applicants to go to one place, select the schools that they're going to apply to, and then have that information firmed out to the schools. Um, in terms of when to apply, I always encourage people to apply early. So like I said, um, at the beginning, the CAS will open usually at the end of each June. Uh, for the following uh, fall entry. And while you don't have to be the first one in that day, applying early helps you, I think, in a couple of ways. One, it gets you a chance to get interviewed and get your decision, and then you spend the rest of your time preparing to go to that school, um, you know, finishing up your last year of school and not worrying about um, interviews and going through that process. Uh, two, in terms of uh, at ICO, Scholarships. I always encourage students, if you want to apply, um, you know, for scholarships, well, scholarships, there isn't a, a separate process, but 
if you want to be considered for scholarships, applying early helps you in that as the cycle goes, the funding starts to uh, dwindle down, if you will, because the pot's b uh, because at the beginning, but as students get accepted and start accepting our scholarship offers, then that pot does dwindle down. So I always encourage students, if for any reason, applying early for scholarships is important. And then uh, the last reason would be it gives you time to uh, work with us. So let's say an applicant applies in September and maybe we want to see more coursework or we want them to retake the OAT. You have time in that cycle to do that before the deadline. Um, otherwise, if you're applying at the deadline, you really don't have that time to maybe enhance your application. And so then you could possibly, depending on uh, what may need enhancing, looking at then applying the next term. So I always encourage students to apply early get it in. I know some students are trying to be strategic about when they apply. I, I totally get it, but I think applying early is just much more beneficial. Yeah, I think absolutely. And, and especially, uh, I recall, I, I applied pretty early and I also just generally had more options in terms of scheduling my interview. I feel like there were more slots available earlier in the cycle. Um, you briefly mentioned financial aid and uh, just having a little bit more availability uh, earlier in the cycle. But as well, could you touch on a little bit as, in terms of what kind of options ICO offers or, or different award packages, at least currently? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do have um, scholarships that we offer entering students. And while they may be limited, I always encourage students to, when you become an optometry student, apply for scholarships. There are over 100 that are available to students, so it's very important that you um, just don't limit yourself to the awards that you receive entering, but that you take up and apply for awards geared toward optometry students. But at, at ICL, we have a variety of scholarships, and they will range anywhere from $3,000 per academic year to half tuition per academic year. Um, our biggest scholarship to half tuition is the Presidential Scholarship, uh, followed by the Trustee Scholarship. Um, we do have a scholarship for underrepresented populations, um, and then we also have a scholarship, some smaller, uh, sort of like one-time scholarships for students who are entering the class. And those, uh, excluding the one-times, the other scholarships, the presidential, the trustee, and the URM scholarship are renewable each year. So as long as the student is in good academic standing, that information will be provided to a student once they get accepted. That is re uh, renewable for each year of their time here at ICO. And that information, of course, will be provided in a student's decision letter. So if they get accepted, scholarship information is there. They don't have to worry about completing another application because it's at the time that um, the decision is made that they are going to be reviewed for a scholarship. So we try to make it as easy as possible when it comes to um, scholarships and that process for students. And then um, going back to just like the acceptance part, if we do get accepted at ICO, um, what's what in terms of like are the next steps? Like I've been accepted to ICO. Oh my gosh! Now now what? Like I understand there's a there might be a deposit fee, and then you know there's like the waiting game. Like what should I do to prepare if you know to become an incoming ICO student? Yes, yeah, so once a student is accepted, they typically will have 30 days to submit their deposit. Uh, that deposit will get credit to the student's first quarter's tuition, so it just doesn't sort of you know, go down the rabbit hole and they never see it again. They do get that credit back. And so at the time that you're accepted, it's very important to start thinking, all right, what am I going to do? If I have other offers, I need to start comparing those. And if I decide to deposit to ICO, what are going to be my next steps? We actually will send students um, even before the deposit comes in, giving them some information about the next step. So they can have an idea of like, all right, what will I need to do? One is consider staying in our residential complex, the RC, which is located across the street from campus. Um, the second is going to be completing financial aid uh, paperwork. So you want to get your FAFSA in so then the financial aid office can issue you an award letter. You also want to think about if you're an international student, Entering the U.S., there is a process that's required for students to get their I-20, and they typically need to submit uh, some paperwork to us in terms of a copy of their passport, um, a letter of support, et cetera, and then we will issue an I-20 typically in the summer before they're uh, arriving on campus. So there are some different things that students will do 
the biggest thing that they can do to sort of assist in this process is make sure that they're looking at their ICO email address. They will get one when they get accepted to the program and we start pushing information out to them about, all right, these are your next steps in terms of what you should be doing to prepare for your arrival. You will have some engagement with some student ambassadors as well as um, our orientation team. We've been moving uh, to get them more engaged in the process a lot earlier. So I would encourage students definitely become, whether it's a member of the uh, Entering Class Facebook group or group chats, I mean, there are, I feel like, various social media outlets that are out there that um, students who are entering become members of and start meeting your fellow classmates. That's probably the biggest piece of advice is to start engaging with your uh, peers sooner rather than waiting till you get to campus for orientation. And you guys can probably share a little bit about that, but it's, it's great. I think it's nice to be able to make those connections. And then in years past, we've seen where students who, oh, I'm from Toronto. Oh, you're from Toronto. Let's meet up. So people are even meeting up before they get to campus. Yeah, I think the uh, the Facebook group was yeah. was a lot of fun before we started school, and it was just a lot of fun to kind of connect with the rest of the class. I ended up running into uh, somebody that I went to middle school with oh, wow. in the Facebook group before we started wow. school. Had no idea that the two of us were both coming to ICO until we both met up <laughs> virtually, I suppose, in the in the Facebook group. And then as well, especially with resources like the RC, that's a great opportunity to start finding roommates and and starting to figure out that compatibility side of it. Tiffany, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, like, I didn't live at the RC, but definitely it was fun to, like, just post my little, like, hey, I'm Tiffany, I'm from the area. If anyone wants to, like, chill or hang out, like, I have a car, we can, like, go hang around the city and, you know, that kind of stuff. And, yeah, it was definitely really cool to, like, meet people through the Facebook group and then finally seeing them in person during orientation. It was, like, really fun. So definitely like all of that was, oh my gosh, a blast from the past, really now. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Tisha, for sitting with us and answering all these wonderful questions. I'm sure it'll help our little anxious, um, you know, incoming students um, kind of figure out if they think ICO is the right fit for them and helping them in their journey to becoming future optometrists. <laughs> I enjoyed the time uh, I spent with you all answering these questions. And I would um, close by saying if anybody has any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Contact us. Our email address is admissions at ico.edu. We are more than happy to help you sort of navigate this process because, well, I've been doing it for many years and I feel as though it's very straightforward. Somebody coming in with fresh eyes, it can be very daunting. Yes, it's a lot of information to review. <laughs> Um, so starting early is, is key. I don't think an applicant should wait to, okay, I'm gonna wait to day one to, that I can uh, apply to start reading everybody's information. Visit um, our website, visit the YouTube channel, talk to ICO alum, really start doing your research and figuring out what you need to do to navigate the process. But as I said earlier, if you have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to reach out to the admissions team. That's what we're here for, to help people sort of demystify the process and help you navigate it. Um, but again, I, I thank you both for your time, and it was great chatting with you.